We will now see how to realize a common source amplifier using current mirror biasing. Earlier, we have used a drain feedback around a transistor to set the transistor's drain current to be equal to some given current I0 and use that transistor as a common source amplifier. Now, with a current mirror biasing, we can have feedback around just one transistor but replicate its bias around many other transistors and realize common source amplifiers with all of them. Okay. Of course, the condition is that all these transistors must be masked and must be on the same uh, IC, same die, so that they are all at the same temperature and so on. Okay. So we will realize the common source amplifier using current mirror bias. Now, what is the current mirror bias? This upper line is assumed to be the supply voltage VDD. I have not shown it always or explicitly pointed to it when I felt it was not necessary, but now I will show that. Here, we have drain feedback around this transistor M0. Okay, And this gets biased with a VGS, which is the threshold voltage plus square root 2i0 by mu n c ox w by l and as I pointed out earlier, this itself V g s being this gives you correction for any deviations in V t or uh, current factor and so on. Okay. Now, I do not want to realize the common source amplifier using M 0. We have already seen that. Okay, We can have a resistor between drain and source and we can AC couple to the input and output and so on. So, that is not what I want to do. We have another transistor M 1 and M 1 and M 2 are matched. I want M 1 to have the same operating point current I 0 and I want to realize a common source amplifier using M 1. Okay. How do we do this? Now, I can just explain to you the circuit, but it is useful to recall how we did it for the constant voltage biasing. So, what did we do then? We had our supply voltage V D D, which of course means that there is a voltage source of value V D D between that line and ground and we had our uh, transistor M 1. What we did was, we knew what V G S we wanted okay, and we used the voltage divider to get that. Okay. V G S required in that case, I will call it old to recall that this is the old constant voltage biasing technique is R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times V D D and we choose R 1 and R 2 accordingly. Okay. And we had our signal source V S R S. Okay. Now, we know that between this terminal and ground, this uh, voltage divider is equivalent to a resistor R 1 parallel R 2 in series with the thevenin source, which is V D D times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. So, how did we uh, have this value of bias and this value of signal? We connected this value of bias through a resistor. Now, we did not use an explicit resistor because this resistor is already in place. Okay. So, the bias voltage is connected to the gate through a resistor and the signal voltage is connected to the gate through a capacitor. Okay. Now, we can do exactly the same thing here. The bias voltage is available from here. The VGS required is this one. Okay. It is not this some fixed voltage, but it is dependent on the transistor characteristics and the current that we want to have. Okay. And we have our signal source. Uh, because of a lack of space, I will show it up here. So, I have VS, RS. Okay. What I want to do is to add this bias to that signal. So, what should I do? I connect the bias through a resistor, I call it R G and I connect the signal through a capacitor C 1. As before, we assume that the signal frequency has some minimum value, which is not 0. 
okay so if it is zero you couldn't do that because then the capacitor will block dc but for a lot of applications this is good enough we can assume that the signal has a certain minimum frequency in that case we can choose c1 to be finite but large enough okay so now i did this also to show you the similarities between different biasing techniques okay in principle you have some way of uh, getting a voltage here you add that voltage to the signal in this case you have some other way of obtaining the dc bias voltage and you add that to the signal okay now this establishes uh, vgs this establishes vgs here we also have to make sure that vds is more than vgs minus vt for m1 to be in saturation so how did we do that with the common source amplifier we connected a drain bias resistor rd okay and the current through this was id0 whatever the operating point drain current of uh, m1 is so the voltage across m1 is vdd minus id0 times rd okay we have to make sure that this is more than vgs minus vt now we can use exactly the same technique here we can bias it through a drain resistor rd by the way this vdd of course also means that there is a voltage source of uh, vdd between there and ground now if this is in saturation the bias current flowing through this will be equal to i not okay this is ignoring lambda this slight dependence of the drain current on the drain source voltage so the drain source voltage would be vdd minus i not rd and our assumption that the transistor m1 is in saturation will be correct if this is more than vgs minus vt which we can calculate and ensure okay so this completes the bias the transistor is now biased with a voltage that is derived from constant current biasing so the difference between this one and this one is that vgs here is a constant so if vt changes if vt increases the transconductance here of m1 will drop whereas here these two are matched so if the threshold voltage increases this voltage itself will increase to compensate for that okay so there is no change to the gm of this transistor that's why we chose this kind of biasing in the first place it is better it keeps the gain more constant now we have to connect the load and that's very easy we ac couple the load to the drain of the transistor more precisely the load is connected between drain and source but of course this is just a representation of the following stage it may not be a physical resistor so we show one terminal as being grounded through this capacitor c2 we couple the load a b ac couple the load and as before we can calculate the value of c2 okay so this is what we did with the common source amplifier and that's what we do now okay and of course the original common source amplifier the gate bias was derived using a voltage divider i had shown some representation of that okay now you can see the similarities between these two the only difference is that this voltage is not constant with respect to transistor parameters okay if the threshold voltage increases or the current factor drops this bias voltage itself increases to compensate for it to some extent okay so this circuit is the common source amplifier using current mirror bias okay this rg it plays a somewhat similar role as before essentially this rg putting it here make sure that the dc voltage here and there are the same okay but the c1 is expected to be very uh, large so this point will get shorted to that right uh, for uh, signal uh, frequencies and you have to choose rg very large so that there is no division of voltage between vs and the gate okay so i hope this part is clear now what you can do is for instance you have another transistor you want to build a bunch of amplifiers let's say you had m2 and you wanted the same operating point and so on you could use the same bias voltage to bias this through a resistor rg of course i'll call it rg2 the assumption here is that rg rg2 are all very large 
okay then there will be no interaction between this amplifier and that one we won't analyze that in detail but if rg is very large it's like having separate amplifiers although they are connected to the same node okay and whatever signal we want to connect to m2 we connect it through another one okay another coupling capacitor and we can realize yet another uh, common source amplifier using m2 okay so that's another common source amplifier and you can bias a whole bunch of common source amplifiers with this constant current derived biasing using a current mirror okay so that's the advantage of this i hope the logic of deriving the circuit is very clear okay otherwise please go through it uh, step by step and make sure that you understand every one of them okay